the arc is changing and dinosaurs now travel in packs, protect their babies at all costs, and even attack you unprovoked. And I now have 100 days to beat the map Ragnarok with this mod the hunt had installed, making everything much harder than it used to be. Day 1, I spawned in the southwestern islands, knowing next to nothing about how this mod works. And I also chose to spawn in the southern islands because I don't think there could be too many dangerous creatures down here, but as I would soon learn, everything in the hunted is now dangerous. Anyway, I started collecting fiber and punching trees as you do in Minecraft. I mean, as you do in art. Anyway, in the hunted mod, you spawn with decreased stats and crafting takes forever until you upgrade a crafting skill. And I timed it. It took me exactly 50 seconds to craft my first pickaxe, which doesn't sound horrible, but you have to craft a lot of things in arc, so this was basically life altering for me. Anyway, after that, I crafted a stone hatchet, which also takes forever to craft. And then I crafted a reusable spear from the reusable mod I have installed as well. And after that, I spent most of the day slowly walking around the southern islands looking for something that I might be able to kill to get some hide. The problem is everything you normally kill to get some hide now fights back and since I have weakened stats I'm basically one shot to anything right now. But I eventually found a dead moss shops towards the end of the day and it took forever to skin its hide. All that for eight hide. Day two and let's hope I can get some more hide today. Like a lot more because I spent five minutes holding E only to get that eight hide. But I ended up getting killed by a raptor less than a minute later. So Q, five minutes of me slowly walking back to get my stuff, which I did manage to get, but the raptor was still in the area, so I'll have to be careful. But moving on, I had an idea how to get hide. I could build a thatch structure a few walls high and stand on top of it and throw spears down since I have the reusable spear. And the end goal is to get a canoe, which requires 75 hide to get off this island island and to the mainland. So anyway, I spent the rest of the day crafting one thatch foundation, four thatch walls, and four ceilings, which took around 10 minutes. My dino killing tower is now fully crafted and ready to be built, and there just so happened to be a Morella tops nearby. So I quickly constructed the tower and threw a ton of spears until I finally hit it. But you see, I was expecting it to try and fight back since all dino mechanics are changed in this mod, but it ended up just running away and there was nothing else around I could hit with my tower. So I demolished the tower and spent some time making a new one before getting jumped by a thyla. And yeah, I know you can't bowl with thylas, I don't know why I threw one at it. However, I did manage to get my stuff back without too much struggle and made my way to the other side of the island, where I promptly killed a baby Morellatops that was all alone. But babies sadly don't give any hide, so I just kind of killed a child for nothing. Day 4, I killed some pegos that were bugging me, and they actually almost killed me, but they didn't give me any hide. So anyway, I made a campfire to cook me up some food and keep me warm in the meantime. And later on, I attacked an iguanodon, which actually didn't fight back. They try and run, but they're pretty pretty uncoordinated, so they're pretty easy to follow. But I found out I could actually bowl of them, so I managed to take down an Iguanodon and a Machops with my boat skin for their hide. And the combination of a reusable bola and speeder is honestly insane in the early game. But I didn't react with them fast enough, because I got killed by a raptor mere seconds after I got done skinning the Machops. And the rest of the day was spent trying to get back to my stuff with no avail. But yeah, once I finally do get back to my stuff, I'm gonna make a canoe as soon as I can and get off this hellish island. Anyway, I finally got my stuff back on day 5 and killed the raptor with a bola. And it gave me a decent amount of hide, so I now had over half the hide I needed. And it also gave me some feathers which you need to make arrows. But moving on, I finally crafted myself some cloth armor to better protect me from the elements as to dinos. But speaking of dinos, I killed two more raptors and I now had enough hide to make the canoe. So the next few minutes were spent farming and crafting and I now had my canoe. And before I knew it, I was finally on the mainland where I decided I would build right where I landed. There were some rocks with natural protection and with some spike walls, it'd be pretty defensive since I actually do have to worry about a dinos attacking me now. But anyways, after that, I cleared out the locals, including a big turtle, which actually gave me a ton of hide. And after that, I crafted a campfire and a prehistoric structures crafting table, but I quickly realized I had installed the wrong mod, which was actually a waste of resources. Day 6, I had the right mod installed this time, and if you want to know all the mods I'm using in this video, there will be a link in the description for them. But anyway, there was now a herd of parasaurs next to my base, and one even tried to attack me, so I had to put it down. But these dudes give a ton of hide, so I'll definitely be taking down his friends and family very soon. But after that, I finally made the right crafting table to make a nice house. But the crafting table had some questionable looks. Oh, that's messed up, man. How'd they make it that? Anyway, after having some trouble of me actually finding the structures to make, I wanted the chief's tent, which wasn't that pricey to make. And after a few minutes of farming, welcome to my humble abode. And I then moved inside and gave that Parasaur's family the friends and family discount off life itself. But after that, I spent the rest of the day farming and placing spike walls around my base to make sure I'm safe in my compound. I added some thatch foundations to my tent on day 7 so I could place a smithy and forge in the near future. And I was planning to go get some more hide so I could actually craft those structures, 
but I actually crashed as soon as I left my base. And when I logged back in, I was back on day six and I had to replace all the spike walls and the foundations again. Ark's just such a lovely game, isn't it? Anyway, once I finally caught back up, I went exploring and actually found some aggressive dodos. Turns out they were actually protecting their nest, but unlucky for them, they're weak and I took their egg, which I'm gonna use to turn into kibble since there's no point to raise dodos. And I'm gonna say this now, the taming mechanics in this mod are completely different. Instead of knocking something out and shoving food down its throat, you have to steal an egg from its nest while the other dinos are protecting it. But some dinos don't lay egg, and for those ones you have to make kibble and passive feed the babies to tame them since babies are stupid and will leave their parents for some food. And speaking of food, as an ARC player, I've always wanted the ARC character physique. Not that physique, this one. Anyway, a helpful tool I've been using to help me achieve my goal is Factor. Oh, yeah. Factor is a fresh, never frozen meal delivery service that delivers gourmet meals right to your door. And Factor meals can easily be picked and made to eat with no hassle. You simply choose your meals and they show up at your door, ready to be cooked in just two minutes. No prep and no mess. It really does not get any better than that. And Factor actually sent me some of their meals to try, and they're what we call immaculate. So Factor sent me this box, and it's a good looking box. But actually, in that box was six Factor meals. And come on, look how good these things look. So I'm actually gonna choose the queso fundido to eat. So all you have to do is cook these is first slide this off, and then punch a few holes into the wrapping just to let it breathe. Alright, it's done. Now, it also says to plate this, but um, I don't really know how I'm gonna get that on a plate. So I'm just gonna eat it straight out of the box. Alright, taste test. Yeah, that's really good. Alright, I'm gonna stop recording and eat this now. And don't worry, Factor Meals are jam-packed with all the nutrients you need while staying calorie smart. So what are you waiting for? Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use my code GRANTY50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Once again, head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use my code GRANTY50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. But moving on, I kept exploring and found a Pteranodon nest with an egg that would be amazing if I can actually raise it. And I only had to kill one other Pteranodon and it gave me a bunch to hide. And I then returned to my base and made a forge before going back out in search of a metal node to make a smithy. I didn't find any, but I did find some Ovis that wanted all the smoke. And after killing them, I found that Mother Nature is pretty brutal and it sent a Carno to kill me. However, I did manage to get my stuff back after the Carno wandered off, and I decided to farm the metal in the river rocks right next to my base. And after some metal smelting, I finally had a smithy and a metal pickaxe. And this is crazy how much this mod really slows down progression. I'd usually have a metal pickaxe by the end of day one, but it's actually pretty fun that have a challenge for once. But anyways, after that, I found myself up a metal hatchet and some more food before setting sail on my canoe. I wanted to find a supply drop because they contain deactivated implants. And with these deactivated implants, I can craft a saddle. And I spotted a green one back on the southern islands and made my way to it. It did have a deactivated implant, but not the one I needed. There are a few types of implants that coordinate to which tier of saddle you want to craft, but more importantly, I fell to my death off a cliff after getting chased off by some trikes. Anyway, I'd gotten my stuff back in the morning of day nine, and I rode my way back to my base. But as I beached my raft, I was attacked by some kind of compi mafia. And to make it even better, there were some pegos waiting for me inside my spike walls, so just the classic arc things, you know? Anyway, I dealt with the miniature threats by killing them, and then farmed some river rocks for metal since there isn't any metal nodes nearby, and crafted myself the saddle kit. This is where you reactivate your implants and turn them into saddles along with a few other materials. And I made a cooking pot, which I tried to make some basic kibble in. Since I can't hatch my PT egg since I don't have a nest, I figured I could pass up tame an equus for now until I get a nest. But for some reason, the kibble wasn't cooking. I don't know if I was doing this wrong or the mod changed how you make kibble, but either way, it was not working. So after me failing to make some basic kibble, I made a preserving bin to keep my spoilables from spoiling. And I then killed some fiomias and a turtle for more hide and ended off the day by placing my new bed down in the middle of my tent. Day 10, and since my kibble strategy wasn't working out the way I wanted to, I decided I might as well bite the bullet and make a nest to hatch this PTA. But the problem was I needed clay and organic polymer, but both were most easily found out in the desert. So after rowing half the day away, I found myself in the southeastern part of the map in the desert. And I farmed some cactus sap and then moved into the dunes and found two mantises I thought I could take down easily. So yeah, that didn't go nearly how I wanted to, and to make it even better, I didn't have a sleeping bag, so I had to respawn all the way back in my base. But after accidentally spawning at the blue obelisk, I rage quit. But when I did log back in, I ended my existence in the water and spawned back in to my base this time. And this time around, I decided to make a raft instead of a canoe so I could store some resources on it and the sleeping bag just in case I die again. Day 11, I had my newly crafted raft and set sail once again for the desert. It took about half the day to get down there, and I managed to get my stuff back and kill the two mantises by leading them 
them to the water and annihilating them with spears. And I got barely enough organic polymer for them. And I also farmed some clay I needed to end off the day. And it took another 15 minutes to get back to my base, but this should be well worth it. Hopefully. Anyway, I now had my nest and I placed it on the side of my tent. And I saw that I needed some oil to run it and luckily I had five, which was enough. I'm not totally sure where I got this oil from, but it was probably from a jug bug or something. Anyway, I threw out the egg, which wasn't actually incubating, so I looked it up and turns out I was just being a rock and it takes a second to start incubating. But after too many minutes of being dumb, I finally came to my senses and now meet Herman. <laughs> And turns out the hunted changes the way some dinos eat, and pteranodons are now piscivores, which means they only eat fish meat. And with me not wanting to farm fish meat, I found out you can just force feed them normal raw meat down their throats, and it works just fine. I mean, I know this is probably more biologically accurate, because I've seen Jurassic World, and these pteranodons do look like they like themselves some fish. But anyway, I spent the rest of the day killing a few local weaklings and raising Herman. Day 13, I imprinted Herman to get him that sweet, sweet 100% imprint. But you may have seen that Herman is only level 1. And yeah, all baby dinos in this mod that you either hatch or tame start at level one so along with you having to scavenge for some eggs to raise they also come out weaker than a stalk of celery so no more fighting max level rexes with my level 30 pt but moving on back to my bird herman's gonna need a saddle for me to ride him and pt saddles are made from regular saddles in this mod and they aren't exactly cheap and first i'm gonna knock out the metal i need to craft the saddle and since i've been playing arc since i could talk i knew of a small cave on one of the islands not too far off the coast with some metal nodes in it so i sailed my raft over and practiced imperialism on the the local wildlife. I needed some more scaled hide for the saddle as well. So that started with me killing some dilos as well as some turtles on day 14. Oh. Please, 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 please. I'm the biggest bird. I'm the biggest bird. We can talk about this. But another thing I needed for the saddle is called core fiber. I'm definitely not saying that right, but it doesn't matter. The only way to get this type of fiber is from cocoa droop trees, which I can actually grow in some crop plots. The only issue is that to get the cocoa droop seeds, you have to find them inside dino nests, specifically parasaurs. So I spent the rest of the day sailing up and down the coastline looking for some parasaurs, but to no avail. It took half of the day, but I finally found a parasaur nest on day 15. And I only had to kill a few parasaurs, but the cocoa droop was all mine. And you actually have to eat the cocoa droop to get the seeds inside, which is weird, but it's free food i guess and obviously i did harvest the parasaur's hide before i left because that's just free hide but anyway i returned to my base and farmed out five crop pots which honestly i hate doing because crop plots are oddly expensive day 16 and i had my crop plots irrigated but the problem was fertilizing them i was way too poor to make a toilet right now so i tried fertilizing them with my own shit but it wasn't working and the plants were eating through it way too fast and later on i looted a yellow drop i could walk to and i got a beta implant and a pretty decent flax chest piece and i didn't really do too much for the rest of the day because i was trying to figure out a way to fix my fertilizer problem without making a toilet. But I did loot another purple drop that only had an implant in it at the end of the day. Day 17, I found an abandoned turtle nest with some more cocoa droop in it, so that's nice, I guess. But more importantly, I decided to screw it, and I'm gonna make that toilet. And that started with me looking into the smithy and realizing how much I have to farm on foot with no tames for the first time in my art career. And we'll just say I didn't start working towards it just yet, because I'm extremely lazy, and I was seriously dreading it. Day 18 started with me looting a green drop, and I got some hide armor, which was actually pretty nice and after that i killed some more local weaklings but what i was really doing is walking to a small area with a few streams where a bunch of beavers like to spawn i need cementing paste to craft the toilet and i'd much rather steal it than farm it for myself because i'm a communist and as i clearly demonstrate right here of me stealing the cementing paste from this beaver dam it's our cementing paste i made my way back to my base on day 19 and also farmed some random crystal nodes on the way home but i pretty much left as soon as i got back and dropped off all my stuff this is because for some reason toilets require 180 raw metal I have no idea why the devs made toilets cost as much. Maybe it's just to be annoying or for the unholy things I'm gonna do to this when I need fertilizer. And it was all going fine until a group of stegos jumped me for no reason. So I had to drag them out the sea and brutally put them down. I finished up my metal run on day 20 and returned back to camp. And once I did, I finally crafted my pooper. And after crafting some pipes and placing them all together, I destroyed the toilet like there was no tomorrow. Anyway, now that my cocoa droops are finally properly fertilized and growing, I could focus on some other things while I wait for the trees to produce the fiber. And I ended off the day by opening a blue drop which had a ghillie chest piece and a delta implant which is the one i needed for the saddle day 21 and my cocoa droop trees were finally producing some fiber usually by this time in my 100 days i'd have an industrial forge and an army by now but i don't even have my first saddle tame yet this is a big hit to my ego anyway speaking about saddles i now need to reactivate the delta implant i got on day 20 to craft the saddle and to reactivate implants in this mod you have to combine them with a trophy you get from killing dinos and turns out sarco skins are compatible with delta implants 
land, so I just happened to know where one is. The problem was I didn't know what level it was because I didn't have a spyglass, and if I got close enough to check its levels, I'd get eaten. So anyway, I just started shooting it with some arrows I got from a drop and throwing spears at it. And after what felt like forever, it finally died, and it was level 174, so that makes sense. But you know what also happens when a dino is high level? Its resources take forever to harvest. But later on, I reactivated the delta implant and spent the rest of the day waiting for some more koi fiber to grow. Day 22, and I have my saddle. It only took 11 hours of gameplay and most of my sanity, but finally, I'm flying. But Herman is still pretty bad. He can barely carry anything. And if you manage to get off the ground, you can fly for about six and a half seconds before needing to land. I literally get more airtime going over a hill in my car than the sad excuse for a bird. Anyway, I shouldn't be complaining. I finally have an okay mode of transportation on this gargantuan map that is Ragnarok. And the first things I did with my new bird was try and get some drops, but that red one right there belongs to the wyverns. And when I finally returned to my base with a few more useless implants, I unlocked the flak and gramps and of course crafted myself some more flak. And I feel a lot safer now that I'm not so squishy. And to end off the day, I stole a trike egg, which I'll probably never hatch. But stealing eggs is a lot easier when you can fly away, and the trikes can't do anything except stare at you while you have their future baby shoved up your ass. Day 23, I looted a purple drop with the loot quality equal to my bank account balance. There wasn't anything in there. And after that, I spotted an iguanodon nest not too far from my base. So after putting down a few of the nest defenders and skinning them because their hide is more valuable to me than it is to them because they're well dead. I then stole the egg and returned back to my base. Well, my base was not safe because four iguanodons followed me back because they were mad I took their baby, which is understandable, but I don't really care that much. So I then proceeded to fly back and found another one of their nests and took a second egg. And after that, I finally made an awesome spyglass, which actually allows me to see creatures stats, levels, and their health, which is important so I don't die while I fight them. And I also crafted a crossbow, which is very effective at putting down rogue iguanodons too close to my base. And to end off the day, I placed down a bone gate and some spike walls so no more dinos infiltrate my fortress of magnitude. But I actually ended up crashing, so I had to refarm and place all those structures over again on day 24. But after I got back to where I was, I then farmed and crafted an ember nest, which is the nest that can hatch small dino eggs. And I needed this nest to hatch my iguanodon eggs. But while they were incubating, an iguanodon began attacking my base, so I had to kill it and farm some berries so my babies wouldn't starve. And farming for a saddle, which was actually pretty cheap since they were only basic saddles. Day 25 started with me putting down a turtle for some scaled hide and to feed my birds. And after that, I looted a yellow drop with a ring, and it had absolutely nothing of value in it. I then opened a purple drop after that and got a few pieces of ghillie armor, which is actually pretty nice, but I've not been impressed with the loot quality of Ragnarok so far. But after flying around looking for some more drops, I found myself in an RG nesting area, and obviously, I stole their egg. But I can't hatch this egg for a while, though, as I need a living nest, which is the top tier of nests that actually require angler gel to run. And the best way I know how to get angler gel is to kill male ice worms in the snow cave. But obviously, I need some stronger dinos actually kill the ice worm, so we'll put that on the back burner for now. And in the meantime, I was trying to get a blue drop on one of the islands off the coast, but Herman actually started to starve and pass out. The hunted makes dinos gain torpor a lot faster when they're starving, and force feeding them doesn't give them more health, so you really have to be cautious about your dino's food levels. As you can see, day 26 is going splendidly. Anyway, when I returned to my base, I crafted some more arrows for my apprentice crossbow that I don't know when I got, but I got. And I also bred my now fully grown iguanodons. And towards the end of the day, I found myself back out where the beaver dam spawned. There was actually a carno and an aloe nesting ground nearby, so I wanted to see if I could steal either of them because I need some strong tames to get that angler gel. But I didn't have any luck, and I could not find either of the nests. However, I did find an ankleo nest on day 27 that'll be used once I hatch my RG whenever that'll be. And I also looted the beaver dams before I left to go back to my base. Anyway, once I finally returned to my base, I reactivated the Zeta implant and crafted an Iguanodon saddle. And it was nice to actually be able to farm a decent amount of berries now, and not to mention they have infinite stamina when you run. I probably should have gotten one of these things right off the bat, but you know, you live and you learn, I guess. I don't really know what I'm saying anymore. Day 28 started with another bad yellow drop, but the real mission of today was to get some oil from the oil nodes in the entrance to the snow cave in the northern part of the map. So after a few minutes of flying, I landed in the dead zone below the mountain to try and get some hide for a sleeping bag in case I die from the cold. But while I was killing some vultures for the hide, my PT Herman was killed by a carno. So I was now stranded far from my base with no way good to get back, and I didn't even get the oil I came here for. But after watching some David Goggins motivational edit videos and coming out of my depression, I 
grabbed my PT Staddles from its dead body and walked my way up to the snow cave. And I then farmed as much oil as I could and then jumped off a cliff and parachuted down to the beach because they, they don't were lonely. Know me, but as I was floating down to the beach, I flew too close to a Pelagornis nest and the inhabitants weren't too happy with me encroaching on their land. And since I was dehydrated out of stamina and had broken bones, I got God. But after respawning 30 feet away from where I died, I decided I'm gonna steal their egg because I don't have a flyer and to spite the Pelagornis who killed me. So I then constructed a ladder and accomplished the greatest heist of the 21st century while getting some crystal in the process. Day 29, I constructed a raft to sail back to my base. And I was trying to place a campfire on it to cook me some food as I sailed back, but apparently two spinos did not want me to eat. Yeah, that was a really close call. Anyway, I spent the rest of the day sailing back to my base because Ragnarok is a huge, huge map. But I did manage to steal a tropio egg on the way. I'll probably never use it, but it's just kind of cool to have, I guess. I finally made it back to my base in the morning of day 30. And after that, I had the idea to tame a griffin. And yes, I mean tame, because griffins aren't affected by the hunted mod. Meaning that they spawn at normal levels, and you knock them out and shove meat up their butt like you normally would to tame them. So I started farming some narco berries and spoiled meat before realizing the hunted changes how you make narcotics. You actually need venom and narco seeds, which I don't feel like doing all that, so I'll be moving on now. And by moving on, I mean moving on to a new PT, because I stole an egg at the end of the day. Herman will be sincerely missed, but I have a boss I have to defeat at the end of this video, so I gotta keep going. I made my way back to my base in the morning of day 31. But when I arrived, there was some Pelagornis attacking my diner, so obviously I had to put them down. But after that, I hatched my new PT. And if you're wondering why my health is so low, it's because there's basically no passive healing in this mod. So when my health does get low, I have three choices. Do nothing and keep my health low, kill myself to get all my health back, or make medical brews to heal me. And I don't feel like doing the second one, and I'm way too poor to make medical brews, so I'm sorry you're gonna be seeing a lot of red on this screen. Anyway, I named my new PT Gilberto, which is a terrible name, but I'm probably gonna lose it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, I spent the rest of the day raising the PT and trying to level it by biting trees and getting other dinos low to finish them off with my bird. I was still trying to level my bird some more on day 32, so it wasn't completely terrible. And I found myself out on that one big swamp island, and there were a bunch of dino nests everywhere. And I managed to steal two spino eggs and a sarco egg. And after that, I returned to my base and repaired my armor. And I finished off the day by finally crafting a fabricator. Once again, this is a giant hit to my ego since it's taken me a third of this hundred days just to get a fabricator. But going back to the eggs I got on day 32, I can't hatch them. I need the living nest, which is the one that requires angler gel. And to craft the nest, you need rare flowers and rare mushrooms. So let's start with the rare mushrooms. And the best way I know how to get these special shrooms is to farm these swamp trees, which takes forever, but it's not terrible. Yeah, after farming the trees, it's actually terrible. But anyways, I remember that beaver dams actually give some rare mushrooms and flowers. So yeah, cue a few minutes of me showing my absolute power and stealing from all the beavers. I arrived back to my base on day 34. And for some reason, you need five re-fertilizer to craft the living nest. So I had to make a quick stop to the pooper. And after a little bit more farming, boom, I have the living nest. I just don't have the angler gel to run it. So now I want to find some carnos to raise. And I want to bring them into the snow cave as they're small and put out some pretty decent DPS with their bleed damage. But I only got a few hundred feet away from my base before my PT needed food. Like, really needed food. It was about to starve. So I tried to kill some Equus before she fell asleep, but it was too late. So I had to wait for her to wake up, and then I spent the rest of the day looking for Carno eggs. Day 35, I basically took the grand tour of Ragnarok. I couldn't find any nests for the life of me. That is, until I flew by the volcano biome towards the end of the day. And I found myself two Carno nests close to each other, and I promptly stole both the eggs and made my way back home. But while I was making my way back home to my base, I spotted a level 102 aloe all alone, and it's a prime target for me to kill. I actually needed to kill this guy so I can harvest his brain so I can reactivate an implant to craft the Carno saddle. Anyway, I took down the aloe and harvested its brain as well as some armored plates that will be used to craft other saddles later on. And when I finally returned to my base, there was a parasaur attacking my spike walls for some reason. But he ran off pretty quickly after I started throwing some spears at him. Moving on, I reactivated the implant and looked what I see what else I needed to craft the saddle. I needed 50 crystal, 200 pelt, and 200 silk, which I thought I would be able to get pretty easily. And anyway, I spent the rest of the day raising my Carnos. Day 37, I crafted the Trofo Spear tribe crafting table. And you may be asking, what is a Trophosir tribe crafting table? Well, actually, I have no idea. I actually meant to craft the crazy potion crafting table, and I had no idea what it looked like. Anyway, I needed the potion table to make a gender swap potion since both of my Carnos were female. And that's what I thought I did, but turns out I made the gender a sign potion, which didn't work, obviously. It took me a minute, but I finally realized my mistake and made the right potion. And later on in the day, I started farming for the saddle since both of my Carnos were now grown up. So I made my way back out to the desert with my sickle and farm 
farmed a few hundred silk so I don't have to come back anytime soon. Day 38 and next up I need pelt. 200 exactly for one saddle. It doesn't sound horrible but my only method of killing dinos is either with my bird which does minimal damage or jump off my bird and fight with my crossbow which puts me in a lot of danger. So I mostly focus on killing dire wolves all day as I could bowl them and kill them with a crossbow pretty easily. So yeah, that was a pretty ass way to start my day to say it lightly, but I'm not giving up. So after watching two David Goggin motivational videos to compensate, I grabbed my iguanodon and ran back out to get my stuff. And since I carry the boats and the logs, I managed to get my stuff back and start killing dire bears for their pelt instead of wolves. The entirety of day 40 was also spent farming pelt. Since I was on an iguanodon, I had to be careful since escaping is a lot harder on the ground. I had all the pelt I needed for the saddle in the morning of day 41. And for some reason, a PT nest also spawned in my base area. Area, but it's a free egg, I guess. Anyway, the last resource I need for the saddle was crystal. So I had to go on a big adventure just to find some with my iguanodon. And I ended up out towards the desert biome on top of a mountain that also had an RG nesting ground on top of it. But I managed to farm a few nodes all right before parachuting back to my base and crafting the saddle. And there just so happened to be a herd of morella tops right next to my base, which obviously I had to fight with my newly saddled Carno. Day 42 and this Carno is weaker than a stick. I don't know what I was expecting since it started at level one, but I I was getting boxed by the Morella top, which I managed to kill, but not very easily. And the Hunted also gets rid of the force feed mechanic, where you can just force feed your dino and it'll gain health back very fast. So I gotta be really careful, because I'm still pretty vulnerable, even on the back of my new Carno. But moving forward, I still want to find a better way to level my Carno that wasn't completely butt cheeks like hitting trees. But I remembered the potion mod I had installed, and it just so happened to have an experienced potion that was pretty cheap to craft. And it was very, very effective. Anyways, after that, I sailed back out to the island with the metal inside. Of it. And I was still only using one forge and a pickaxe at the time, so production was still pretty slow. Day 43, I returned to my base and farmed a bunch of wood to make sure my forge would keep burning. I really don't know why I haven't made more yet. Probably just laziness or something. I don't know. But anyways, I still need to farm another whole Carno saddle. So I spent the rest of the day in the redwoods by the green obelisk with my Carno taking down bears for their pelt. The entirety of day 44 was spent farming pelt, but I got more than enough I needed for the saddle. And with my new Carno, I was actually able to take down a few mammoths with obviously give a lot of pelt because they're huge. And yeah, I think these carnos will definitely be a good investment, but let's just hope that they can take down some ice worms. The morning of day 45 started with death. There were some rogue Pelagornas attacking my base, which obviously I couldn't allow, so they were quickly executed for their crimes of encroaching on my land. But now, the only thing I need for the second and last saddle is an aloe brain to reactivate the implant. So I mounted my carno and searched. And searched. I searched around the green obelisk, the canyons, and even made my way to the castle that overlooks the Viking Bay. But I could not find one of these shittier versions of Erex to save my life. I was still searching into day 46, and I guess the art gods felt for me a little bit because they blessed me with a flak leggings blueprint. Anyway, I finished my lap around the map without seeing a single aloe until I took one down by the green obelisk on my way back to base. It would have been a lot nicer if this sucker had spawned in while I was over here the first time. Anyway, I harvested the brain and returned to my base to craft the saddle. And I also leveled this Karno with the experience potions so it wasn't completely horrible anymore. I mean honestly these two should be able to take down some decently powerful enemies with mate boost but I can't get to the cave just yet because I don't have a flyer. So in the morning of day 47 I started incubating some more PT eggs I've stolen over these past few days and while I was waiting for those to hatch I crafted one of the flak leggings I got from the blueprint and repaired the rest of my armor. And after claiming my new birds I saw a red drop coming down in the distance so I made my way over with my iguanodon and it had a long neck blueprint, an implant, and a wreck saddle blueprint. Now normally this would be an amazing Amazing find, but with the hunted being the hunted. So this Rex saddle blueprint required 12 extraordinary saddles per craft. And I don't even know if I'll be able to craft 12 extraordinary saddles in this playthrough because they're very, very expensive. Anyways, after that, I finished raising the birds and level one up. I named Joe with some experience potions. So now I could technically go to the snow cave, but it's cold in the snow cave. So I want to get some fur armor first. And you know what that means more pelt farming. I actually got what I thought was enough pelt for a full set of fur armor on day 48. And since I had a PT, I could just fly around to the mammoths I spotted and throw out my Carnos from the crystal balls and it was easy pelt all day. But I actually did get jumped by a Trudon in the morning, but my Carnos took care of it and I just woke up fine. I got back to my base in the morning of day 49 just to see I was just short of enough pelt to craft a full set. Oh well, I have the major four pieces. If my feet freeze off, it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, I now have all that I need and I need to fly 10 minutes that way. 
game. And I plan on spending no more than 5 minutes in here, just enough to kill a few ice worms and peace out. And that was the plan until I started freezing way too fast. I couldn't place any sleeping bags, so I had to leave the cave. I'm really gonna have to rethink my strategy and come back, because I'm just gonna die as soon as I throw my carnos out. I left something out on day 49. As I was leaving the cave, my bird was about to start starving, meaning it would pass out very quickly, so I put it into the dino ball. And then I logged out. I think you can see where this is going. I logged back in the next day IRL and threw out my bird for it to instantly pass out from hunger. Yeah, I, I completely forgot it was about to pass out. So anyways, I had to kill something for some raw meat and give it to the bird, wait for it to wake up, and then fly back home. And since I had all that time to think, I thought about my new strategy to kill the ice worms and to get some angler gel. I wanted to use the mind wipe potion and basically pump all my points into its fortitude and hope it'll be enough to keep me from freezing to death. So now that I have my plan of action, I set off to the beaver dance to steal some more rare flowers and mushrooms. And don't worry, I killed myself at the end of the day to get my health back. I know it's kind of cheap, but I have no other way to heal myself, and that red tint in that loud-ass harpy is really annoying. But mind wipe tonics are really expensive to make. I'll put the recipe on screen right now, and I want to make two. So once I get the angler gel, I can use them to get back to my normal stats. Anyways, I need narcotics to make them. And if you remember earlier when I wanted to make some, I found out that you make narcotics with narco berry seeds and venom. The seeds aren't the hard part because I have iguanodons, but I'm gonna have to kill a bunch of titanobos and arthropleuro for venom. But the place to find both of these creatures is the desert that I love so, so much. So anyway, I made my way out to the desert and began my oversized snake and bug killing crusade. But with my Karno starting out at level 1 when they were hatched, they don't have that much torpor, so one of them knocked out, but luckily my other one kept me safe. And yeah, titanobos actually spit venom now, so I had to be really careful. Anyway, I spent the rest of the day taking down titanobos and arthropleura and began flying back to my base once I had all my venom. I got back to my base in the morning of day 52, and after converting narco berries into seeds and my iguanodon, I began crafting all the narcotics I would need for two mind wipes. And after I got my drugs crafting, I wanted to make even more, but this time stimulants. So I farmed some stimberry seeds, and I already had the charcoal from cooking food and smelting metal. And I then queued up my stimulants to craft and grabbed my two carnos and took them inland a little bit. I did this because there were some aloes not too far from my base, and I needed to scale to hide, armor plates, and their brains. So I killed all three of them and harvested them like an industrial machine. But mind wipes require a bunch of cooked prime meat as well, so when I returned to my base, I cooked up some tasty aloe meat to turn into the mind wipes. Day 53, I had to farm a few hundred meho berries, but after that, I crafted both of my mind wipes. And I then ate one and set off to the snow cave, not using all my levels just in case I need to pump some more points into fortitude if I start freezing. And I also wanted to put a few points into weight and health so I can move, and I'm not a one-shot if for some reason I get dismounted. Anyway, after a few more minutes of flying, I made my way into the cave and put the rest of my points into my stats accordingly. And I then threw out my carnos and went in head first. I'm getting this angler gel no matter what. And I got a little confused at first when I first went in, but once I found the right tunnel, I killed some ice worms and got out of there. And I had just gotten under 200 angler gel, which should be more than enough for the rest of this playthrough. And the ice worms actually did put down some decent damage, but my carnos managed to handle it. But finally, I have all the angler gel that I've been after for almost 20 days now, so when I get bigger eggs like Rex eggs, I can actually hatch them now. It took me almost 10 minutes to get back to my base on day 54 because my PT was very slow and I decided to parachute home because I'm lazy and want to watch YouTube. Don't judge me. I know most of you are scrolling on your phones or have a different tab open while watching this video. Anyway, when I finally got back to my base, I threw on my carnage to heal and ate the second mind wipe to get my stats back to normal. And after all this time, my living nests finally worked, so I hatched the RG egg I got a long time ago to celebrate. And I spent pretty much the whole rest of the day raising the bird, as it takes a decently long time to raise since it's not a PT. But I also did kill this random megalodon that was beached right next to my base, so my PT actually had some meat it'll eat on its own for once. I'm really getting tired of shoving food down its throat every time I land so it doesn't pass out. The start of day 55 was spent raising a baby Anklio I hatched. It'd be very useful with my RG to farm more metal because my current method is terrible. But speaking of my RG, I need a saddle to actually ride it. But the problem was the implant I needed to reactivate needed a spino sail. So I flew around the swamp area for a while, but the only spinos I could find were very, very high levels that I couldn't kill. So eventually I flew towards the canyons towards the end of the day to continue my search. I decided to take down a level 162 I found all alone in the water on day 56. And it wasn't that hard to take down because it couldn't figure out how to get onto the little rock I was standing on, so I got a bunch of free hits on it before killing it. And after harvesting the spino sail, I returned back to my base and there were some more Pelagornis attacking my dinos. I took them down with ease, but honestly, this is getting really annoying. Anyway, I reactivated the beta implant I needed for the saddle and saw that I needed keratin, more armored plates, and wool for some reason to craft the saddle. But I think I'm gonna put that to the side for now, as I think it's finally time I get some wyverns. I have the nest for it and they would really speed up my travels around the map, so I'm gonna go get some. I managed to steal a level 108 
poison wyvern egg at the very beginning of day 57. And I knew I wasn't going to outrun this fire wyvern that was chasing me, so I pulled arguably the biggest play of all time. I managed to dismount from my bird and then cryo it before dying to the fire wyvern, so my bird was completely safe. And I then respawned, ran up, and got my stuff, and peaced out back home. And this wyvern's going to be super useful because it took literally the whole rest of the day to get back home. I guess I was flying coast to coast, but come on, this is kind of ridiculous. A discovery was made on day 58. Turns out you can incubate wyvern eggs in the medium sized nest. So I could have gotten a wyvern over 30 days ago with my first PT. That would have made everything much, much easier. But I guess it's all part of the hunted experience. I hate myself. Anyway, my baby poison wyvern hatched and I named it accordingly to how I was feeling about the hunted at the time. And most of the day was spent waiting for their wyvern to finish raising, but when it did, I obviously leveled it with some experience potions. And I then had the massacre instance, as you do when you get a new powerful tame. And, and I ended off the day actually flying back to the wyvern scar because I want another wyvern in case this one dies somehow. There is no way I'm ever going back to flying a PT around the map. I flew in and out of the wyvern trench in the morning of day 59 until I stole a level 108 lightning wyvern egg. I then quickly flew back home and spent the rest of the day raising it because lightning wyverns are my favorite of the wyverns and I was really excited to have this guy. And I also gave it another fitting name for the hunted. The lightning wyvern took a few minutes into day 60 to finish raising, but once it finally did, there was no stopping me. I pumped a bunch of experience into it and then began tearing through the local Deinonychus population. And I actually stole some of their eggs because I planned to bring some into the boss fight to hopefully shred through the dragon and manticore before my rexes die or fall asleep. The torpor effect the manticore has is probably the most dangerous part of the boss fight. But I also did take out a few spinos while I was out by the swamp for a few more spino sails in case I need them to craft some saddles. Took my pores in while I ran out to the entrance of the snow cave to farm some more oil. I honestly can't remember what I wanted this oil for, but it was probably just for the fabricator or something. Anyway, as I was taking down the dire bears that were guarding the oil, I accidentally shot a poison ball too close to myself, and well, you can see what happened. It's not that bad, I guess. I can just respawn on my base and fly back with my lightning wyvern. I told you guys it was a good idea to get two of these. So, anyways, I made my way back and saw my poison wyvern was taking a lot of damage from a bear that was still alive somehow. So instinctively, I started shooting lightning at it to kill it. But I forgot, wyvern breasts also hurt your own tames. Yeah, I... I got my stuff and went back home. Feel free to roast me in the comments for that one. I really deserve it. Anyway, to take my mind off things, I decided to raise some Deinonychus to hopefully start producing more eggs, so hopefully I can get some mutations on them. And since they're not going to be used to fight, I didn't imprint them or level them so I can see their base stats. And towards the end of the day, I set back out towards the Wyvern Trench to get another Wyvern egg since I only have one now. I arrived to the Scar on day 62, and one of the first eggs I found was a max level 210 Lightning Wyvern egg. And I spent most of the day there as well, as I wanted some more eggs in case anything stupid like that happens again. But I didn't find anything worthwhile, so I just returned to my base. And once I got there, I crafted a weird looking feeding trough. I mean, it acted as a normal feeding trough, but it just had a bunch of extra slots. Day 63, I brought my new lightning wyvern into this world. I had to give him a cool name like Draconis because he's max level and he's a lightning wyvern. And after imprinting Draconis, I wanted to make some experience potions to power level him, but I was running out of rare flowers, so I took my now fully grown lightning wyvern to raid some beaver dams. And there was no mercy for these beavers now. I melted through all of them with my wyvern's lightning breath. And once I got back to my base, I made a bunch of experience potions. And Draconis was now fully grown, so you already know he's about to get some crazy levels. And after shoving four potions down his throat, Draconis now had over 20k health and almost a thousand melee. So basically, I can now kill anything in this map with ease. But now, I need to get back on track. I need to start farming for my RG saddles so I can speed up metal production. And that starts with me farming wool. You get wool from sheep, just like in Minecraft. But the sheep are a lot harder to find here, even with my wyvern, because they're tiny and a lot of creatures like to eat them. So much harder, in fact, that it took me until day 68 just to get all the 250 wool I need. And now, I know that may sound ridiculous, and it was, I'm the one that spent over two hours flying around this map looking for Ovis. Not gonna lie, I thought something was wrong with my game. I even DM'd Natural Causes on Discord to see if I was doing something wrong, and he recommended I cheated, but I'm not about that life. I didn't even hey, consider um, it. Real talk with you guys, if I don't find the sheep soon... I'm gonna summon it in. Anyway, after I got the last wool I needed on day 68, I returned to my base and tried to make a few medical brews in my cooking pot. But it was very inefficient, so I just dropped it. But this lack of water thing made me want some canteens, so I flew out to the desert and took down a few mantis for the organic polymer. Day 69, and I had my six canteens in my RG saddle, finally. And the first thing I did was take my RG and Enki to the island with all the metal in it. And I got my Enki saddle from a drop. I don't know when, but I did. I could make my editor look through the footage, but he hasn't wronged me 
yet so instead you get to see whatever he puts on the screen right now anyway after farming a few nodes i found that it wasn't that easy to farm metal in a cave so i decided to fly over to the green obelisk where i knew some more metal nodes were so i farmed some metal and returned to my base to see another group of pelagornis attacking my dinos again and they even killed joe before i put them all down joe won't be missed that much because i have wyverns that i like way more but you were still a good bird and i spent the rest of the day farming some wood by hand to keep my singular forge burning day 70 i wanted a saddle for my deinonychus so i can move them around my base more efficiently but i needed an rg talon to reactivate the required implant but when you have a wyvern it's really not that hard to kill an rg so i even killed a whole flock of them anyways after i hatched another deinonychus egg i raided even more nests for their eggs and i was still pretty set on trying to get some mutation on these guys before raising my army i started day 71 off by putting some more berries into the feeding trough so my berry eating boys don't starve and i then spent most of the day raising dinos to try and get their health or melee mutation but to no avail and i also saw what i needed to craft a rex saddle yeah there's no way i'm going to be able to use that blueprint to craft good saddles and finishing off the day i made my way back into the shadow cave in the northern part of the map as you may have seen from the saddle crafting requirements i need cocoon silk fiber you get from killing spiders at first i thought i'd find a bunch of these spiders in the shadow cave but i only found a megalosaurus before leaving and i managed to kill a few in the castle and to harvest them but i found most in the volcano biome and i actually spent the majority of the day farming over 300 cocoon silk fibers for only one rex saddle i spent the entirety of day 73 by my base however and i'd spend all day breeding deinonychus to really try and get some mutations but i was not having any luck but while i was failing at breeding i added a whole new tent to my base area this one was a lot bigger so i could put some more structures into it if i needed because i was starting to run out of space in my tiny tent day 74 was more the same trying to get some mutated dinos but to no avail and i added some thatch foundations in the tent so i can actually place some structures inside of it but for some reason i also farmed a few silica pearls in the southern islands and these guys were nerfed by the hunted too they barely give any pearls and they give fish meat for some reason at least day 75 was a little different instead of raiding the nonicus i was raising rexes and i wasn't going for mutations or anything but i needed to raise an army for my army but i also wanted to make some more experience potions to level them so i had to raid the beavers once again these poor dudes cannot catch a break day 76 i raised the last two rexes i needed for my boss army and with that my army was pretty much complete except literally none of them had saddles but moving on to actually fighting the boss i need the tributes to summon it. so i flew out to the green obelisk to check the requirements for the gamma boss and yes i'm only going to do gamma because i know i'd get dogged on if i tried alpha or even beta and honestly i'm not sure if i'm even going to be able to complete gamma but anyway i saw i needed every single artifact on the map to start the gamma one and i think my reaction said it all oh. Hell nah. So now that I need to get all the artifacts in the next 25 days, I need some scuba because one of them is actually at the bottom of the ocean in a Tuso trench. So with that amazing realization, I crafted some flippers, but I saw I needed some more polymer to craft the scuba tank. So at the end of the day, I set out towards the desert to kill some mantises. I finally made it to the desert five minutes into day 77 because even with the wyvern, Ragnarok takes forever to traverse. Anyway, I killed some mantises, harvested their polymer, and set off back to base. And once I got back, I crafted some scuba tanks and then set off again to actually go looking for the artifacts and first i made my way to this lake thing with a crumbling stone structure in it and i swam down to the bottom and there was literally nothing inside of it now i know i'm not the greatest experienced ragnarok player but i could have sworn there was an artifact down there but i guess it was all just a dream or something anyway after i looked up all the artifact locations on google because i'm obviously not smart enough to do this on memory there was actually 11 artifacts on this map which is insane but all right i guess i have to do it anyway there were five artifacts either either just wide out in the open or inside a cave but are pretty easy to get and the other six are either in the lava golem cave the ice room cave or the labyrinth cave but i want to get the five freebies first so i started with the artifact of the strong that's actually really close by in a small monkey temple thing and after breaking the rock and collecting my first artifact i set off to the shadow cave where there are actually two artifacts and at this point i actually had the exact coordinates of all the artifacts pulled up on my other monitor and i just typed the coordinates into my map so they were pretty easy to find i made my way out of the cave in the morning of day 78 and i flew straight across the map past the volcanoes and the highland to the redwoods where i got my fourth artifact that was in this tiny cave and after that i returned to my base and i think you can all guess where the fifth freebie artifact is yeah it's it's the one underwater so it's not much of a freebie actually anyway my plan to get this thing was to tame an ichthy real quick and pick it up before getting eaten by a two but after flying over the southern islands i spotted one but realized i have to tame a baby with basic kibble so i returned to my base and i had everything to make it it's just if you remember from earlier on in the video i can't make it i had the recipe right and everything but i guess the hunted just breaks how you make kibble so after trying literally everything i could think of i decided to grow a pair of balls and i'm gonna swim down there myself and get the artifact i could use some flippers 
and reusable grapples to make movement much easier and it shouldn't be that bad. So day 79, I crafted a reusable grapple and then set all my wyvern to the spot above the artifact. And I then descended into the water and began spamming grapples at a nearby rock wall, but I crashed. Hmm, I didn't really expect that to happen, but all right. Anyways, when I logged back in, I was back at my base and had to recraft the grapple again, so no big deal. And after redoing that, I flew back out with my wyvern and let's just hope that doesn't happen again. So I jumped off my wyvern into the water once again, but there are some sharks waiting for me. No big deal, I can just grapple back to my what? Yeah, I think the grapple's the problem. And once I logged back in again, I grew tired of getting screwed over by glitches, so I decided to cheat. So I spawned in one basic kibble and threw the ingredients needed to make it away. Sue me. And after that, I found a baby ichthy and tamed it, and I'm gonna do this without grapples. And after that, I spent the rest of the day raising the ichthy and farming for its saddle. I needed some more quill hide, and the only thing I knew that gave quill hide are pegos, so I found quite a lot of joy farming for a saddle this time. I finished my pego killing massacre in the morning of day 80, but when I returned to my base, I quickly realized that I didn't have any chitin for the saddle, so back out to the desert I go. And after killing some mantises for chitin this time, I returned to my base and finally crafted the saddle for the ichthy. And this saddle was pretty simple simple and only required a blood pack to activate the implant. And after that, I killed a fish and harvested a ton of meat for my dolphin from it. I wanted to make sure my dolphin had enough food because they shred through, and with Torpor rising so fast, it could be really dangerous down there. But after that, I deployed my ichthy into the ocean and got the artifact. It was honestly really easy to find. The next artifact I wanted to get was in the Lava Golem Cave. And notice how I don't know any of the artifact's actual names, it's because I don't care enough to look them up. Anyways, between play sessions, I actually installed a new reusable grapple mod. This time, it's called the Grapple grappling bow. It's just another crossbow that reloads with infinite grapples. So after crafting that, I made my way over to the cave, but quickly realized I forgot parachutes, which are essential for gliding through the cave and not falling into lava. Anyway, there was nothing special about actually getting this artifact once I got everything I needed. There's some weird mechanic where cave creatures don't actually spawn until you're in the cave for a while, so it was deader than my community tab inside. But next up, I want to do the ice worm cave. So I want to craft another two mind wipes so I don't freeze to death while I'm fighting her. So I was out in the desert again on day 82, killing Arthroplura and snakes for their venom to make narcotics. And later on, I returned to my base and started crafting the narcotics and then moved on to farming stimulants. And towards the end of the day, I farmed some mayho berries and placed some more campfires to cook the prime meat I needed to craft the mind wipe tonics. Day 83 started me with raiding the beavers once again. I needed some more rare flowers and mushrooms, but honestly, I wasn't getting that many rare mushrooms from these smaller dens. So I made my way towards the Viking Bay where these giant beaver dams spawn, and I got more than enough from them. And after dropping those off, I flew back to my base and killed a diplo for prime meat and i spent the rest of the day cooking the prime meat in my campfires and i crafted both mind wipe tonics at the end of the day i started day 84 by cooking up some more meat to make sure i was well fed in the cave because you burn through your food when you're cold and after that i ate the mind wipe bottoms up and headed over to the cave and i'd just like to say i messed up my recording settings for pretty much the whole day so there won't be any audio because you can hear me watching youtube Chappy took a crappy in my gumbo. Anyway, I began making my way through the cave with ease, but my Carnos didn't have very much health, so I cry with them and threw out my lightning wyvern, which can actually fly in there for some reason. And after not too long, I found myself parachuting down to the boss arena. And once I got my wyvern out, it was game over for the Iceworm Queen. It seriously took me like 30 seconds to kill. Now, day 85 is where I begin to have even more recording issues for like the next five days. And that started with me completely forgetting to record me getting the artifact. But I did, I got the artifact of the pack, and started day 85 right outside the cave. And after that, I made my way back to my base and I wanted to make some shotgun bullets for an ascended shotgun I got inside the cave. You see, the last four artifacts I need are all in the puzzle cave. And there are usually a lot of cave creatures in there, but since my single player game doesn't really like to spawn cave creatures, I'm not really gonna need that many. So for the rest of the day, I spent it crafting gunpowder that I eventually turned into bullets. Now, day 86 and 87 is where my recording issues got really, really bad because I don't have them. Yeah, I lost both clips and guess Guess what? Those were the also two days I spent doing the puzzle cave. Basically, my computer shut off and the clips were gone when I turned it back on again. But maybe they're somewhere in the depths of my PC, so they likely got Thanos snapped when my PC randomly turned off. But they're dead to me. So that was like an entire hour of me suffering and you guys don't even get to see it. I hate the hunted, and I hate art, but at least I have all the artifacts now, which kind of makes up for it, but I'm still pretty salty. But now, I need to focus on leveling my boss fighting dinos and try and get as many saddles on them as I can before day 100. And yeah, I'm not gonna allow myself to go over day 100 this time, because I actually need to complete 100 days for once, and I hate the hunted, so I don't want to play any more of it. But anyway, in the morning, I farmed a bunch of mayho berries so I can craft a ton of experience potions to power level my rexes and dinos. But after that, I need a lot more rare flowers. So once again, I was 
back to raiding the small beaver dams, then flying out to the big ones towards the end of the day. I finished raiding the big beaver dams in the morning of day 89 and headed back to my base. And once I returned, I crafted over 20 experience potions, which is a lot, but not nearly enough. And after that, I put a bunch of experience potions into my Rexes to level them up and leveled up all of my Dinos. And I pumped all health points into my Dinos because I don't really know if melee affects their bleed damage, but don't take my word for it. But after that, I wanted to craft all my Dinos some saddles because they're relatively cheap and should be useful. But I need RG Talons to reactivate all the implants. So day 90 started with me mowing down some RGs and harvest them like no one else's business. And while I was on my way back to my base with my haul, I actually spotted some Spinos, which I also mowed down. And I harvested some Shag Green from them, which is what I need for Rex saddles, but I still don't know how I'm gonna get the Black Pearls you also need for their saddles. Anyway, once I finally got back to my base, I reactivated the implants and crafted six saddles, which is good, but not enough. So after saddling up six more of my Dinos, I set out to kill something for some more scaled high. And I found myself some Rexes, which I quickly killed and began harvesting. But some Trudons came up behind me and started attacking me while I was harvesting it. No big deal, I got back on my Wyvern and started lighting them up. But after killing them, I dismounted too early and killed myself to my own lightning. Bruh. Anyway, I made my way back with my other wyvern, got my stuff and the hide, and made my way back to my base at the end of the day. I returned to my base on day 91 and crafted the remaining Deinonychus saddle. So now I need to focus on Rex saddles. And looking at the requirements again, I need black pearls. So my plan is to try and steal a squid egg if they even have nests. And then I'll raise it and then kill the other squids for their black pearls. So I got my ichthy some food and set back out to the Tuso trench. But it went about how you'd expect. I got chased out as basically soon as the Tuso's loaded in. So after returning to my base and doing a little more research, I found out there were actually black pearls chilling on the ocean floor literally 50 feet from my base. Yeah, you can literally collect them by hand. But the problem was my ichthy could not really hold any of them because it had super low weight. So I returned to my base and made another basic kibble to tame a second ichthy and pump a lot of weight into it. So that's exactly what I did. I abducted another ichthy and finished raising it to adulthood. I tried to get some imprint on it, but I missed it. Anyway, I put a bunch of experience potions into it and got over 800 weight. I then spent the next 10 minutes farming around 400 black pearls for the Rex out. And now the last thing I need is to reactivate the alpha implants. But sadly, the only things that I can use to reactivate the alpha implants are alpha tributes. And the only ones I can really see me obtaining are either the alpha rex tooth or the alpha megalodon fin. So anyway, I spent the rest of the day flying around Ragnarok searching for an alpha rex to no avail. And throughout this entire playthrough, I think I've only seen one alpha and it was a Carno, so my hopes weren't that high. The search continued on day 93, but after no luck, I moved my search underwater for an alpha megalodon. But there wasn't any luck there either. Yeah, this is not looking good. Day 94, I I gave up the search. I realized this probably wasn't worth it for me to spend all this time to only find one alpha and get one rex saddle. So instead, I spent the whole day transferring my dinos to the green obelisk. I know it's not ideal for my rexes to not have saddles, but I can't really do anything about it. Day 95, since I decided I can't ride a rex in the boss fight, I need to ride a dino. So I spent the day raising a new one with more stamina and weight than the others to keep me alive in the arena. And I also had to raid the beaver dms one last time to get the rare flowers I needed for some more XP potions. Day 96, I leveled up my dino and headed over to the green obelisk. I was pretty much ready to do the boss. I just had to wait a few more days for the rest of my dinos to finish healing since I leveled up some of them recently. But day 99 is the day you're all waiting for. I'm just gonna cut straight to it because I need to get this video out and I no longer have the will to live. But seriously, even though this mod was a pain, I highly recommend it for you guys to check it out if you want a real challenge and arc for once. Anyway, if I kill the dragon and the manticore, I'll emerge on day 100. And if I don't, I don't know, I'll delete my channel or something.